everybody, Mother Pixel is here. My name is Robin. Thank you so much for tuning in to watch this edit. Today I'm going to show you how I took this photo from this really dark colorless picture. Uh, this was again a result of using my ND 1000 filter during the day. So I really wanted to get that nice long exposure because I wanted to um, even out the water. So it almost looks like you could skate on the water is so flat, which I love that effect of the long exposure. So for that, I screwed on an ND 1000 filter to block out a lot of light. And I had my exposure open for about 30 seconds. My ISO was set at 100 and my F stop at around 11, 11. Okay, so that will give me a lot of sharpness and uh, that's just about the right setting to get this long exposure, to not overexpose my picture, but to get that nice smoothness in the water. However, because um, I put this dark uh, filter on it, it really washes out the colors, but we are going to recover them, as you can see, in Lightroom. So it's gonna be a quick, easy, painless procedure. Again, it's important to know that if your photo is underexposed, that is okay, no need to panic because you can always recover the details. So you can even recover the details in the leaves and in the ground. However, if your photo is overexposed, that means it's really white, you cannot really recover details from overexposed photos. So those I'm not even gonna bother with. Okay, but in this situation, we are going to transform this photo. So we are going to get started in the step-by-step -step tutorial. So first of all, we're gonna come here and reset our pictures. Okay, now we're back to square one. Okay, this is from camera. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my exposure a little bit, recover a little bit of those details, just about there. I'm gonna increase my contrast to add a little bit more punch to my picture. Now we're gonna bring down the highlights because you see you get those details, a bit more details in the clouds. If I was to go the other way, you completely blow out your picture, lose all details in the sky, and it even goes and leaks into, bleeds into the mountain up here. So we're gonna bring down my highlights. I'm gonna increase my shadows to about, I think that's, that's pretty good. I mean, I don't wanna go 100% because again, it really overexposes my picture and I don't like that look. So let's keep it around 60. My whites, we are going to clip those, so hold down the option um, Alt on a PC, hold it and then just slide. And see, once you get those uh, colors, that's where you know you are at your sweet spot. And we're gonna do the same thing with the blacks. We're gonna slide it to the left. And once you get those colors creeping up, you know that's far enough, okay? So now I'm gonna increase my clarity because I do want to have a little bit more clarity in the mountains and in this bush and in the trees and in the branch. So we're gonna increase the clarity to about 40. See, it adds a bit more contrast to the photo. And also we are going to make this picture way more vibrant. I like the look of vibrancy more than oversaturating my entire picture because with saturation, I like to saturate the individual colors that I'm attracted to in this photo. I don't wanna saturate my entire picture because it gives it a very unnatural look. So see, that is just a bit too much. So we're just gonna go about 20 for saturation. Vibrancy, all right. So see, the picture is already looking a lot better before and the after, just with these simple adjustments that take, what, maybe one to two minutes. So now we're gonna go to the highlights. Let's see what the highlights does to my sky and to my water. I don't wanna increase my highlights too much because then it really adds a lot of glare to the water. So we are just gonna maybe, just a touch, just, just maybe nine, maybe. Okay, just right there. My shadows, I'm gonna add a little bit more shadows to the photo because it adds more contrast and it makes my pictures look more natural. So see, that's too much. So maybe at around 20. All right, point curve, let's see medium contrast. Mm, no, that's a little bit too much. I think it adds too much contrast between the whiteness and the darkness and it makes the glare of the water look 
not that good. That's a bit more natural. I like that better. So here at the um, HSL bar is where I'm actually going to play with my saturation. Now you see there's a lot of green in this photo, so I want to add a bit more orange and yellow here in the mountains and in the branch to add contrast and more colors, more drama to this photo as opposed to just having it be all green because there isn't really a lot of color in the sky because of this large cloud, so we're going to have to find color elsewhere. So what I'm going to do here with my hue, just keep your eyes on the mountain, is I'm going to bring down my oranges and I'm going to bring down my yellows. See how that is already adding a bit more color to the photo, especially to the mountains because it's adding more contrast between the mountains and the green. Okay. And then I'm going to slide over to my saturation and I'm going to increase the saturation in both the orange and the yellows. See? And now there's a little bit more contrast. So if we go to the before, see? Kind of kind of plain, we add a little bit more orange and yellow tones to the mountains and to this branch and just right here to this section and it already makes the photo more interesting and more colorful. Okay. Luminance, um, maybe if we bring down the yellow a little bit more, see if I go to the right it's going to make it brighter but if I go to the left it's going to make it a little bit darker and add a little bit more contrast which I really love. Um, I think I've said this before in my other videos, but I absolutely am obsessed with color. I love bright, colorful pictures, the kind of that just make you stop and go, whoa, where was that? And this isn't, I don't consider this to be cheating. Um, my ND filter really darkened my pictures. And when you go to Grassy Lakes, it is absolutely beautiful. It has tons of emerald. It has tons of uh, green and blues in the water and it's just breathtaking and I think I'm trying to capture it as best as I can like how I saw it how I perceived it I want to present it to you um, so now with my uh, split toning this adds colors to the highlights and to the shadows so we're gonna go to the highlights and we're gonna add a bit more warmer tones so maybe at around like an orangey yellow tone because I do like the effects that it's having on the mountains and on the branch which is the contrast that I want to add to my picture so I'm keeping it very subtle okay I don't want to go too crazy so I'm gonna keep it just at around let's see there okay now on my shadows I might add a bit more of a bluish tone to bring down the greens a little bit I think that's that's good. It's nice and subtle. So we can see it's going to be a very subtle change. So pay attention. That's the before. That's the after. It's just very subtle. Maybe we're going to add a bit more blues. Maybe a bit more right there. Okay. So before the after. Very subtle changes. So sharpening, I want to sharpen my mountains and my trees and my bushes here. So I'm going to sharpen to about, there we go. But I don't want to sharpen the water or the sky, okay? When I do long exposures, I want my waters to remain smooth. So we're going to hold down the option or alt on a PC, hold it down and slide. And then we are only going to leave white what we actually want sharpened. So I'm going to get rid of the water and the sky. That looks about right. Okay, that's better. Okay. Now here we're always going to click off remove chromatic aberration. Always click that off. And then we're going to enable profile correction. So whatever lens you're using, you click on this. But remember, you have to shoot raw for your computer to detect this. Okay, for Lightroom to detect this, you have to have a raw image. You, you click on Enable Profile Corrections and it immediately knew that I used my Sigma wide angle lens. Okay, so my wide angle lens distorts the edges, it rounds your pictures at the, at the very edges of the photo. So this corrects that issue. Okay, makes it nice and flat, more natural looking. You can manually select the lens that you use. So if it doesn't pick up the correct lens, if it doesn't detect it, you can come in and manually select your lens and it'll fix whatever distortion that lens causes on your photo. So now here we notice I have this little bit of vignetting because of my filters that I had screwed on. 
So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm just going to crop it. Okay. Now my horizon is not perfectly straight. See, it kind of takes a dip here. So we're going to straighten that out. So there's two ways you can either manually do it yourself by just kind of eyeballing it like so. Or you can use your angle tool so you draw a straight line where you want to your photo to be straight. So right about there and it'll do it for you. Okay, so that looks a bit better. Okay, going back, going back, going back here. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, vignetting just because I want the attention to come here on this branch. Okay, that's my main subject in the photo. I mean, aside from the color in the water. So we're just going to add a bit. See, just about there. See, without it, it kind of all is the same color, but we add just a little bit more and it adds more contrast and more interest to my picture. I always love adding a little bit of vignetting. So now here you can either play with your camera landscape, see what that does. Uh, that adds a lot of contrast and saturation, camera standard. Um, let's see, let's go back to Adobe Standard, which is the original that I had. Let's just stay with that. So here you can play with your primary colors. I'm going to slide my reds a little bit more just at about nine because you can see it adds, a, or six, it adds a bit more contrast in the mountains. It makes them a little bit more orange, more intense. Okay, now my computer's lagging. Okay, so now my greens to the left, that kind of desaturates my photos. We're gonna add it a little bit more to my, to my right and really make that green, those shades of green and the water pop. Okay. So that is it for my global adjustments. Now we're going to start working on local adjustments. So one of the things that I like to do is add clarity to my solid objects. So that would be the mountain and the branch and this shrubbery right over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my brush tool and this basically paints whatever effects you want from here onto the items that you're brushing over. So it's already at 100% clarity, but I'm still going to teach you how to uh, reset. So you come over, you hover over the effect, you hold down your option on your Mac, Alt on your PC. When it says reset, you click on it and it'll reset all your settings so that you can play around with whatever it is that you want your brush to do. So I want the 100% clarity or 84. And now I'm gonna brush over my mountain. Okay, I'm gonna brush over it, over my trees, over these bushes over here. Okay, and I'm going to make my brush a bit smaller to do the branch. You can adjust the brush size right over here, okay? You can slide it, make it bigger, make it smaller, so right over here. And you know what? I'm going to maybe add a bit of more contrast. Okay, it's adding that effect. All right. I already like how this looks. Let's see. That's the before. That's the after. Uh, finally, with the overall picture, I think it might just be a little bit too bright. So I am going to uh, bring down the exposure, the overall exposure, just a tiny bit. Okay. Let's see. Well, I think 115 was good. One. Well, I think that's good enough was 115 that's my sweet spot right there well that is it for this photo so i hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned how to use lightroom a little bit more that you understand all the individual tools that you have at your disposal to make your pictures more vibrant and richer and prettier and better and more impactful so stay tuned for more editing videos that i'll be posting and thank you so much for tuning in and watching